Um, last month, we started talking about love, and um, over the next, the plan is we're doing pre lock services. We're doing, I think it was six or seven, one of the two, I don't know which number it was. But um, from the beginning of June to, it was six, okay, of course, June until December, we're going to be doing a service once a month, the first Sunday night of each month. Amen? When I was praying about it, and I was like, Lord, what am I supposed to talk about? He took me to the love chapter. Immediately, I thought, for real? That's what you're going to make me come out the block with? Come on. Uh, we're talking about love. We're talking, that don't preach. I need something to get people riled up, tell them they can get a new car. I'm just going to, I'm, 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 I'm not, I'm totally kidding. I'm not that guy. Um, but God really has been doing some amazing things in my heart, just researching and studying about the, the concept of love. And when you read the love chapter, there's a couple different themes throughout the verse, and um, it, it all broke down to be exactly what we needed to hear for this first six months. And, the, and I think it's important that we talk about love up front because the church has been silent on love. Amen. And we've been judgmental. Mm -hmm. Right? <laughs> Come on now. Yeah. We've been judgmental. We've been, uh, in some cases, bigotry. I, I guess that's what you call it, where you, you act like you're better than everybody else and yeah. you're really doing stuff behind the scenes yourself. Amen. Uh, we've oh, been doing God. all kinds of stuff and we call it love and we call it God. And God's like, no, that's not me. And um, the Bible says that God is love. Amen? Amen? And I was thinking as we were preparing and going through all this stuff, and I was reading over, I was thinking, man, if we understand love, we understand God. Amen. Now, not to say that we'll uh, completely encompass all of who God is, but, you know, because that's kind of virtually impossible because he's so amazing, so good, that we could really never fathom the completeness of who God Amen. really is is and what he really has done for us. I mean, if we could just wrap our mind around the fact that the universe sits in the palm of his hands, it would kind of change our perspective about our old little old problems because we would see, oh, God holds the whole universe in his hand and I'm worried about a bill. Wow. Um, um, so, but I, I, I think if we understand a little bit about love, we'll have a little bit clearer definition of who God is. Because the Bible does say that God is love. Yes. Amen? Yes. And it tells us that love covers all. Yes. Right? Yes. Right? Yes. Talk to me now. Come on. Yes. Love covers all. So if we know who God is and we know that love covers all, then all of a sudden it becomes a reality that God is all, all of a sudden involved in everything in our life. And we cannot live without him because we can't live on this earth without love. That's right. Amen? You love something, whether it be food. Some of y'all just love me. Fried chicken. You love something. And uh, listen, if, if you love fried chicken, obviously God's somewhere in the fried chicken. I'm just saying. Amen. I mean, we'll give a shout out now. Um, but but we have to get. I think if we get a clear understanding uh, uh, and kind of a uh, an understanding of what love is, we'll understand who God is. And so over the next um, now four months left, um, over five months from July the fourth until our first official lock Sunday, which is January fourth, we have we are less than five months now. Woo -hoo. Woo -hoo. So um, we named this series above all else. Above all else, because the Bible says that love is above all else. And if we understand what love is, then we realize who is above all else. God. Amen. And so no matter what's going on in our lives, God is above it. Amen. And so when we get that perspective, when we begin to realize and understand that God is above every situation, some of this stuff that we deal with on a daily basis won't be as important. Because you realize you got a power greater than yourself that can deal with the situation. Also, you'll understand that God sees it differently because he's above all. We look at it head on, but God's looking at it from the top. 
Right. And so okay. when you see stuff on the top, you can see the entire picture. And you can see how it's all going to play out. I ain't going to preach that tonight. I just wanted to set you up for where we're going. Amen. So the first time we talked about love is kind. Amen. Love is patient. Love is kind. Amen. How many of you know that the beginning of all love is patience? God was patient with us. While we were yet sinners, Jesus died. Amen. And he was patient with us. He didn't have to be, but he was. Amen. He's still patient with him. I know I get on his nerves. <laughs> and he's still patient. He didn't kill me yet, so I'm, I'm just grateful. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And love is kind. Now, some of us ain't kind, so we don't know nothing about that part of love. But we just mean to understand when we love it. Love is patient, love is kind. But this week, this month, I want to deal with the second part of this same scripture. Because verse, verse, verse 4 says, love is patient, love is kind. And then it says, it does not envy, it does not boast, and it is not proud. Mm. Three very heavy subjects. Following the fact that patience and kindness, he goes on to talk about it's not envious and it's not boastful and it's not prideful. Yeah. And he just destroyed the whole human race in one scripture. Because <laughs> 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 most of us ain't patient. Yeah. So yeah. we got a whole bunch of fast food. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And we, 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 we ain't too much too kind yeah. because yeah. we got all these jailhouses. Yeah. Unfortunately. And um, envy. Mm, you know. Boastful? Mm. Yep. And it's not proud. Amen. And so I'm sorry that it's not on the, the scriptures are not on the screen, but we're pretty much. Amen. Send me a letter. <laughs> so I wanna I just wanna talk about that today, just easy boasting and prideful. Amen. And understanding who you are. I'm going to read two more scriptures, though, that I'm going to, we're going to set up and uh, connect these things. The, f the first one is Jeremiah 1 and 5. Jeremiah 1 and 5, it says, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. And then the next one I want to read is Jeremiah 29 11. It says, For I know the plans I have for you. Declares who? The Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Amen. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for being here. And I just thank you for what you've already done. I pray to use me to speak your word tonight. I love you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Many of the issues today in our world stem from the idea that we need more. Uh, we kind of talked about this last time. Is The fact is that sometimes we're just not content with what we have, and we always want more. Right. And society is built into us this uh, with the ads and the campaigns and all these different things that we need to have bigger and better all the time. Okay? Yeah. I know I struggle with this. It's called iPhone. <laughs> iPhone, because if they come out with an iPhone 6, I want it. If they come out with 6, a, I want it. 6B, I want it. 6C, I want it. I'm just saying, if they come out with 26 different iPhones and it's all called iPhone 6 something, I'm probably going to struggle with getting it. Because I feel like somehow it's bigger and better and I need more. The fact is, I had the iPhone 5 and it came out with 5S. It's almost the same exact thing. Very much. But I wanted the 5S. And, it's, and it comes back to a stature thing. It, it comes back to uh, setting ourselves up to, to feel like we have more than somebody else. And, and so society is built to, into us that we, ha we have to live with this idea that the better and the more we have, the, the better we are. Okay? And, uh, and, and we're, we're really good if we got the greatest and the latest. And, and that's just not true. That's just not true. And, and our inability to be okay with who we are and what we have, uh, it, it really messes up our morals. Okay? Because we begin to do all kinds of stuff to get what we think we need. And we disregard other people all the time. And we do all these different things. And so, and, and so with our morals uh, uh, tainted, we begin to make decisions that destroy relationships. Amen. 
destroy friendship, destroy all kinds of stuff. And, and, and then we turn around at some point in our life and we begin to realize that we have messed up because we had a desire for more. And now it's not wrong to want more. It's not wrong to get more. But it's wrong that more drives you. Okay? The Bible talks about the love of money. It's the root of all evil. It's greed. It's, it's, it's needing more. Needing yeah. more. And what happens when you become greedy? You become obese and you begin eventually you, you fall off the curve. And so we begin to destroy relationships. And what's even more disturbing is that we are aware of our actions that we still make great strides away from God's intent. Even though we know that these desires and these things that are happening are, are pushing us away from God and destroying relationships left and right all around us and friendships and all these different things, we still uh, uh, strive and, 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 and really go after passionate, going away from God's intent for mankind. And that was to live in peace, to love one another, to love our God. Amen? And, and and as I begin to think about this, I begin to think, I wonder how many of us live in regret or live with regret. How many of us live with worry? I wonder how many of us will be honest and say, if I could go back and, and do things differently, I would do things differently because I know that relationship that I destroyed out of my greed would not have been gone if I would have just did this differently. And I wonder sometimes how we live our life because we begin to set ourselves up wonder, you know, going through life out life, you know, time at a time and we destroy this relationship, we destroy this relationship, we burn this bridge and we do this. And and I wonder sometimes if we stop when you when we're all alone, if we can really just stop. I wonder how many of us stop and think, wow, I wish I could do that. I wish I would not have done that. I wish I would not have been that person. I wish God would have made me differently. See, it is the sense of entitlement and the lack of settlement that drives us to believe that we need more. Because we really believe what we have is not enough. We believe that we're entitled to more, and we're not. We 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 believe that we're entitled to more, and, and we we lack the ability to settle with who God made us to, who we are. And so it drives us to believe that we need more, and the reality is we just do not think we're good enough. Come on, teacher. Come on now. That's the, that's the truth. That's the real that's the real underlying issue. When we desire more and more, we don't think what we have or who we are is good enough. Amen? Amen. Amen. And when we stop and think and we read the word of God, it tells us different. And so tonight, I, I want to settle on the idea that I am enough. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. Yeah. You got to say it like an old Baptist person. Neighbor! Neighbor! I am enough. I am enough. Some of y'all need to cut that out. You can't say that. I am enough. I am enough. I am enough. Not me with all my gadgets and toys. and I don't even know what gadgets is. Gadgets and toys and all these different things. Not me. I am enough. Without all the extra stuff. Without the features, the add-ons. I am am enough. And that's the that's what we gotta believe because see we 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 live our life like we buy cars. Well, don't give me the base model. But then people gonna leave me like you you drive the base model. I am enough. The base model of Fred Giles is enough. Amen. Because God made the base model. When I leave this earth I ain't taking no iPhone. Although I might try. I might talk to God. <laughs> hey, Lord. I need my Facebook app, okay? I'm just saying. he be like, look, I got Facebook right here. So as I broke up the scripture, I began to 
Recollect how many times I have been envious, boastful, and prideful. And the end result was overwhelming love. I just don't even sound right now. I begin to think about, man, when I operated in these three, I wonder how many times it has ended with something really, really good. The problem I ran into preparing the message is that I couldn't figure out a situation in which that actually happened. Because every single time I ended up in chaos, something going on. Well, what I did discover is that in every instance, it led to the reality that I needed to know, um, a, a reality that I needed to know, and that when I operated in one of these three, it, was all, it always fell back on the viewpoint of what I had of myself. Anytime I operated in envy, and anytime I operated in boastfulness, and, and all these things, and, and you know, I, we'll deal with this, but the Bible tells us how to boast. It does tell us how to boast. It does call God a jealous God, and that He loved us a lot, you know, and, and uh, He loved us so much that He, you know, we probably won't put nothing before Him because the Bible does say don't put nothing before Him because it just won't be a bastard. He's too gangster to let you put something before Him. It will not be a bastard. I'm just saying, just put your God rolling up, you know. Just, Really? That's how you feel? <laughs> you are something else. <laughs> but when I, when, I, when I begin to look over it, all the viewpoints led back to a way I felt about myself. And that with envy, I, I realized either I thought I deserved something someone else had. I thought I deserved it because I had worked harder or, you know what I'm saying? I mean, it, it was all about me. I, I couldn't begin to understand why they got what they got and they didn't work as hard as I did. Well, they didn't bleed like I did. God, I stepped out on faith in you. And look at me now. And look at me. It was always pointing back to me, a viewpoint of I had of myself. Or when I was bragging about something, I, I would go on bragging about uh, all of my works. Look what I did. You know? Look what I did. Look what I accomplished. Look at this great thing that Fred Giles did. And when it really came down to it, it was also pointing back to me. It was affirmation that I needed from people to make me feel good about who I was. Now you, you you may glow in the dark when you sleep and you don't do all wrong and that's good on you. But I I mess up sometimes and sometimes I do get boastful and sometimes I do get prideful and sometimes I do seek affirmation from people. Amen. And that's my struggle. That's my personal struggle and I deal with that. And so I I, I begin to look at that and so I would go bragging about my works or or, or I was just prideful. I just thought I was better. Than You may not be thinking that, but you know somebody who is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Somewhere around. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I don't talk about none of your slurs. <laughs> but it was a viewpoint about myself. Amen. See, all of these things lead us to thinking about I. Hmm. Not I am, I. I, well, I, I, I need that because I work harder. I need that. Why do they have that? Why don't I have that? Come on. Or look at what I did, man. I, I, I'm, a, I'm really good. I'm really good at that, don't you think? Or I can't hang around with them people. I'm, I, they ain't on my level. Oh. They ain't on my level. That's a Christian term for him. Leave me alone. I don't want to hang around with you. Are we unequally yoked? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she put that on a t-shirt. I can't mess with you. We unequally yoked. <laughs> so I was thinking about this message. I wanted to deal with a couple of different things, and I want to get out your way very quickly because 
and other people with kids to the beginning. Um, so the first thing I want to deal with is, uh, and, and this is just three things that, that came to my mind as I was preparing this message. First thing is love yourself. Okay? Now that may be uh, very messed up considering the fact that I just talked about I. And I'm telling you to love yourself. Now how can you love yourself more if I'm telling you to love yourself and you are and you hear me going, man, you, you're always concerned about I, 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 I this, I need that, I need this, I work really hard, why do they have that, and I don't. But you need to understand if you love yourself, you'll be content with who you are and what you have. And so you won't spend your life going I, 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 you'll spend your life going thank you God for who I am. Because the reality is if we love ourselves, like the Bible tells us, love is patient, love is kind. And then he says, it, it does not even is not boast, it's not proud. If we love ourselves, we'll be patient with people, we'll be kind to people, That's and right. we won't be so daggone envious. Yes, you are. Because what other people have won't bother us. Amen. It won't affect you. It won't, you won't be walking around going, man, I think I need that. I tell you what, most people are broke because they're trying to keep up with other people. That's right. Even with the Joneses trying to buy Jordans for $300. That just don't make no sense. And you doing it, and them shoes, you going to grow out of them shoes? I mean, I mean, really, think about it. But see, this is how we live our life. And it comes back to the reality that we just don't love ourselves like God loves us. And when you don't love yourself, you're not content. You spend your life jealous. Man, I really need that. And you don't. And I love it because the scripture in Jeremiah 1.5 says, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. God invested so much in us way ahead of time, and we're not even content with who he made us to be. We don't know the real us because we're so filling it with so many different things we, that we think we need and we're piling our life with all these features and all these add-ons and all this stuff. And God is like, that is not the person I formed. Before I formed you, I knew you. I knew you. I knew you. I knew who you were. I was. It was very clear to me who you are. And, and I know these things now, but you don't know who you are. God is going, before I even put my hands on you, before I even shake you, before I even molded you, I already had an understanding of who you are. Oh my God. Amen. And we sit back and we live our lives going, I need this, I need that. And we don't love ourselves right. because we have not taken time to get in the Word to discover who God made us to be. Love yourself. Love yourself. I wrote this down. It says, envy is a direct reflection of us being unsettled in who we are. Oh, that's good. you got to begin to become content that God made you special. God made you different. He made you unique. Amen. That's right, sir. You can't understand that. God thought you were so special that he gave you your own thumbprint. Think about it. If it had to be me, I would have created a template and said, that's mankind. <laughs> I've been done with it. Do you know how important you must be for God to get into the intricate details of your finger and make a, something that sets you apart from everybody else? But we don't think about that. We don't think about that. Huh? I need more. I need this, I need that. I must not be that good because I don't have this. Amen? Amen. Amen. Second thing, and this is going to be a strong one. Second thing I want to talk about real quickly, and that is, the first thing is love yourself. second thing is remove yourself. Amen. Remove yourself. Amen. All right, now, remove yourself. Amen. You see, Envy is a result of you not loving yourself. Boastful is a result of you loving yourself too much. Amen. Amen. Putting yourself first and everything. And you need to learn how to put yourself in the background. 
What's his name? Lafrey wrote a song. Says I can play the background. Yes. Because I know sometimes I get in the way. And I find myself repenting a lot because I always get in the way. And see, when you get in the way of God trying to move, two things gonna happen. Either you're gonna slow the process down or you're gonna get ran over. Amen. I'd rather be out of the way and follow God than get ran over. That's right. Because if you get ran over, it may not be us. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. God is explaining to us right here, right here through Jeremiah. He's saying, I already set you apart. I already removed you. I already took you. You got to love yourself. Love yourself. That's fine. But don't love yourself too much. Don't get in the way. Because when you get in the way, you just mess everything up. And I don't know who thought that we as humans could handle our own lives. Because the truth is, we can't. We get in the way and we don't trust God and then all kinds of stuff starts happening. And we got to learn how to remove ourselves so God can actually grow us and do things yeah. through us. Amen? Yeah. And if we learn how to step out of the way, God can show up and show out and move on our behalf. Right. And then he begins to turn around and say, look, this is my servant who I'm well pleased in. Ah. See, we got to learn how to step away from the situation and move out the way so God can actually show up and do stuff. But we always put ourselves in the situation. We worry, we doubt, we do all of this stuff. We mess up all these God time, all these God sized situations, and we don't understand why things are going so bad for us. And the reality is, we got to learn how to have faith and step out the way. Long time ago, Bishop Bishop Tony Miller, my bishop, he told me he's a friend. Faith is when you reach the end of your abilities and you step in God's ability. It is when we begin to say, I am enough, but I'm not enough to handle what only God can handle. I am good enough, but I'm not great enough to, to do God's work. And so here's what, and let me let me let me clear that up because see, God will use you, but you can't do God's eyes work without God. And we gotta stop trying to do all these things on our own and live our life on our own. You know, we saw in the song tonight, tell me what can I do? Because I I can't live without you. And we, but we gotta live our life like we believe the lyrics that we sing, because if we can live our life like that, we'll begin to see God do some great things. Amen. Amen. Why is there all this stuff going on in the world? Why is all this stuff happening? All this bad stuff. It's because we don't know how to move ourselves out the way and let God do things. Mankind always got to step in the picture and think we can control it. And we can't. We mess up every time. Remove yourself. Please your name say, get out of the way. If Louis Chris was here, I'd ask him to sing his song. Oh, oh, there you go. Some of y'all are like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, we didn't have to We're going to have a special guest, Louis Chris, coming to sing his song. He can give us A and B selection. Before I formed you in the room, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet. God already determined that if we could get out the way and just live based upon his definition, we'd be all right. Amen? Amen. The last thing is humble yourself. Humble yourself. Twenty nine eleven says, Jeremiah twenty nine says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. See, pride puffs us up. Yeah. Gets us all big headed and different things like that. Exactly. But really, pride is an issue of trust. 
We get prideful because we don't trust people. We gotta know how to humble ourselves. To see humility positions you to be vulnerable. And when you're vulnerable, you trust. But we don't trust because we're so puffed up. You know, I, 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 and you know, I love my, my Christian folk, but we are the worst. Yep, we are. Honey. <laughs> <laughs> we are the worst. Because we get real judgmental real quick. People walk around with their look a certain way. We do. And we wonder why people run from God. Why people don't turn to God no more. Hello. People struggling with different things. You know, back in the day, they used to, church was something yeah. special. Okay? Mm-hmm. Wasn't just something you did on Sunday. Church was, man, I got to get to church. Because right. I know that if I get in God's presence, something's going to change. Yeah. And that's the yeah, way that's right. the, the, the life, that's how it used to be. But now we're, we, are, we have built this religion or, or whatever you want to call it that is so judgmental and so separating and so racially divided and so all of these different things and, and we see people who run from God. They don't want to be around this mess because we are just as messed up as them but we think we better than them. And then we go, well, nobody goes to church. Well, of course not. Who wants to be around you when you act just like them, but you think you're better? That's like us driving the same car, going to the same place, but your car dirty. I ain't riding your car. But my car dirty too. We get to the same car. That was a bad illustration. Y'all gonna leave going, what was he talking about? <laughs> Humble yourself. Humble yourself. I, as I was reading the scripture, I got to think about humble, humble ourselves. If we learn how to humble ourselves, we can trust God's plan for us. See, He says, "For I know the plans I have for you." Okay, for I know the plans I have for you. Not, I told you the plans I have for you, and you just got to figure them out. No, I know the plans I have for you. And if we want to figure out what God has for us, then we got to trust God and not ourselves. And we got to move out the way, and we got to humble ourselves and say, God, whatever you have for me, I'm okay with it. And so he he goes, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and, and not to harm you, plans to give you hope in the future. And sometimes you get wrapped up in life because, see, life, when you're following God, sometimes it's just not clear. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Come on, yeah. It's not. It's not. We started, when, when, we, when we got the message, the Lord said to start this church, I was like, cool. And I thought I would go to my current job and they'd be all happy that I work for a church. And just let you know. And I was like, man, woo, I'm excited. God's calling to start a church. Oh, really? Okay. Uh-oh. Cool. You got to go. Peace. Um, immediately, God, you know, things started going differently than I perceived that I, it would happen it. But I'm sitting here going, Lord, you said this is what you wanted me to do. Why Why is this not going like it's supposed to well, Like I think it's supposed to go. And God is going, you trust the plans I have for you. Yeah. Hum, humble yourself. Because, see, the reality is until we humble ourselves, we cannot actually accomplish what God wants us to do. Because if we're always in the way and we always think we got a better idea than God himself, then something's wrong with us. And God has plans for us. He has set up th- things for us. He is, you know, the Bible tells us that he only wants good things for us. Yes. Yes. 
And he's right. done all these great things for us. And he's right. made all these ways. And he's paved, paving ways. And he's doing all this stuff. But we cannot see it because we're so prideful. And we're so in the way. And we're so, God, we got a better idea. And God is like, well, if you would just humble yourself, I could do some great things. Because if you realize that the plans I have for you are better than your plans, the things that I have for you are better than what you can do for yourself. If you could just get in my will and not your will, I will begin to show you things that you've never seen before. You'll begin to accomplish things that you never thought you could accomplish. Amen. But we got to humble ourselves. We got to get out the way. We got to go, you know what, God? I trust you. I trust you. It may not look good right now. It don't even look like it's going to work out. God, my finances look crazy. You know what? I This week, I was like looking at the Lord. You're going to have to show up. <laughs> Because it don't look good. And I'm going, you got to be kidding me. You called me to this and look what I'm going through, God. And it's so easy to fall in envious and see yeah, some of my yeah. friends who are playing That's churches right. and they get yeah. sponsorships and all this stuff. And I'm seeing like, what do you got going on for me, Lord? Come on. Yeah. It's so easy when, you, when you're not humble, when you're not trustworthy, when you can't trust God, when it's so difficult. You see, life makes it like that. We got to learn how to, even in the hard times, not fall to the snare of envy and boastfulness and pride because if we fall in those, we're not loving people. We're not showing God's kind of love and we're not following God himself. Now, I love Paul because Paul says you're going to boast, boast about what the Lord has done. But if you're going to boast about what the Lord has done, you got to first humble yourself yeah. so he can do it. Yeah. Praise God, I don't have to worry about it. It's about to get rid of what? Well, I can boast. Well, you can't. Not until you humble yourself. Right. And then when you boast, you need to boast about what God has done, not you. Yeah. Huh? Right. Just remove yourself. Right. I feel like God's going to come down to earth and, you know, make a man do it. And just... <laughs> You are something else. That's what he's going to say at the gate. Right? <laughs> no, 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 no. So, I just like to add you are something else. <laughs> if we humble ourselves, we begin to understand God's plan for us. But I know it's difficult. It's difficult. It's difficult to understand that God has something for you. He wants to do something with your life. And all you see is destruction. And all you see is letdowns, disappointments, hurts. It's really, really difficult. And how do you do that? How do you trust the God that calls you to something that's bigger than you and you have so much fear? Scripture says, for I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and to hand you. God wants to make you better. He doesn't want to destroy you. He doesn't want to hurt you. And though people may hurt us, and people don't, sometimes people don't want to make us better, that's not God's plan. And I get it. Because, see, we approach God how we live in life. We approach God determined by our environment. But you can't do that. Because God is bigger and better. But he doesn't want for you what your neighborhood had for you growing up. He doesn't want for you what people think you should have. He wants what he has for you. Yeah. Above all else, God is above all else. And if we trust in who is above, then the stuff beneath us will love us. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. And I love it because he said hope 
day and the future. Many times we couple both of them. We think that our hope is our future. But God says, I want you to hope for some things, but I want you to also understand there are some things that I have sent my word up in the world. That no matter what, I've already planned it for you. You, you get that? Yeah. Some things you will hope for. But there's some things God says, I already took care of. Yeah. I already made the way. I already paved the way. I already opened the door. I already closed the door. Whatever it may be, God has already done it. And, and we got to begin to understand that that kind of love, that kind of love is amazing love. And that love will not ever fail us. But it comes back to our viewpoint of who we are. So you got to realize that you are enough. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I am enough. I am enough. Why? Because God already said I was. He already determined that I was enough. He already made a way for me. He already opened the doors. He already done, did all these great things for me. And if I could just stop and humble myself and remove myself and love myself enough to really get into what God has prepared for me, then I will realize that none of the selfish stuff matters because I am enough. I am enough. And so when we're thinking about love, Think about love. Uh, you know, what I want you to take away from this tonight is you got to love yourself enough to know that God loves you more. And if he loves you more, he gave you everything you already want. And so when you begin to weigh the circumference, you know, to put your life on the the scale or whatever you want to weigh it against what you have or what you don't have, however you do it, you begin to look at the pros and the cons and I have and I don't have, whatever it may be, begin to always remember, start with the line at the beginning, I am enough. Because the rest of this stuff is add-ons. It's features. That's all it is. You can't take it with you. If you can't take it with you, then you obviously are enough. Amen? Amen? And I remember hearing a long time ago somebody saying, man, when God formed man, everything that man needed to survive in this earth, he put in his body. So, I want to... For a minute, just bow your heads, close your eyes, whatever you however you do it. But I want you to begin to I, I just I get wrapped up in this subject because for so long I live my life trying to prove myself to people who in the long run didn't even care. And sometimes we do that, we live a we try to prove and we try to prove them. And it's all because we want people to accept us and think that we are enough. And we have done this and I'm good and, and this. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what people think. It doesn't matter what, what goes on in your life. You are enough. And if you can begin to grab hold of that truth <coughs> you begin to hear from God you begin to see the things that God wants to do for you because the reality is he already prepared the way for you he's already done everything that needs to be done we got to live out our call we got to walk out our call the Bible says to work out your own salvation in fear and trouble work it out Salvation has already been provided. Now we're working. 
top. I just want to encourage, I don't know who, who was in this room, but if you deal with low self-esteem, guilt, shame, if you need approval of man, I want to announce to you today that you don't. You don't need all those things. God is a deliverer. He's a healer. And every disappointment, every heartbreak, every letdown, he can use it for his glory. And I also want to remind you, before you were even formed in the womb, God had a plan for you. You may be sitting in this room, you may say, man, I have experienced so much hurt and so much pain in my life. How could God ever use me? How could God ever do anything for me? I have done so many bad things. How could God use somebody like me? And I came to tell you, he used me. He used a lot of other people in this room. And if you can look at my track record, you'll be like, wow. And if he can use me, he can use you.